Hello everybody, I am Secret Agent Guy, and I'm about to prove that the Easter Roast game is a fact. First, I'll be going into consumption statistics, the Easter Roast game death toll, and as a finishing touch, a rant at the end of the video. Without further ado, let's begin. The first choice of meat is roast turkey. Let's start with this statistic. According to the University of Illinois Extension, 88% of Americans that eat turkey on Thanksgiving also eat 19 million turkeys on Easter. Let's use 2011 as an example, 736 million pounds of turkey. Now let's play devil's advocate. According to eatturkey.org, the average weight of turkeys purchased for Thanksgiving is 16 pounds. This is what 19 million turkeys looks like in pounds, which is 304 million pounds. And this is the result we should get. But here's the thing. That is 41% of the total amount of pounds of roast turkey, which means we get 301,760,000 pounds of turkey, which only adds up to 18,860,000 turkeys, which is still wrong because either the consumption statistics don't add up for turkey as an Easter roast or families did not eat turkeys as Easter roasts. Plain and simple. And the second and last choice of meat, ham, because it would not be lamb or roast beef either because that would contradict it even more. According to a Fox News article written and published by Associated Press from 2012, ham has been selling wholesale for 75 to 80 cents per pound this spring, which is in line with last year's prices but well above the 55 cents per pound average for the previous five years. Americans consume about 51 pounds of pork a year on average, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And according to an NBC article published by Mike Brunker and Martha C. White, of the roughly 24 billion pounds of pork produced last year, roughly 60% was processed into products like bacon, sausage, according to the National Pork Producers Council. A little over one quarter of total production was exported. Let's say for the sake of argument, one third of the pork that has been produced, which is 7,920,000,000 pounds then let's take 40% of that out. Now we have 3,168,000,000 pounds of ham. Then I divide that number by 51. Now I have 62,117,647 roast hams. Either the 88% of Americans that eat turkey on Thanksgiving, according to the University of Illinois Extension, also ate turkey as Easter roasts, or the remaining 12% of Americans overwhelmingly ate roast ham as Easter roasts. No matter how you look at this contradictory situation, families did not eat turkey or roast ham as Easter roasts. And remember the first Easter roast game video? The actual amount of dogs that are consumed as Easter roasts every year in the US is 32,850,000. Remember this number? That is the amount of calories per serving of dog meat, 262 calories. Here is two servings without sides. 524 calories. And finally, with some people who have bigger stomachs, three servings, 786 calories. And here is the average serving amount in calories for dog meat, 524 calories. And here is the amount of calories of dog meat consumed for 10 people without sides, 5,240 calories. And according to Statista.com, as of 2018, the U.S. Census Bureau counted about 83.09 million families in the United States. I have done the math here, then I divided by 365, then by 19, and I got 62,781,774. Technically, on average, that is two dogs consumed as Easter roasts per family every year. Now let's get into the Easter roast game death toll. There are some times where families eat more than just two dogs on Easter. Remember this number? The amount of dogs that die every year from the last video? 40,150,000. Counting off the dogs that die of old age, die of disease, die from being euthanized, 
or even just die suddenly, I get 33,044,375. And according to USA Today, it is illegal in all states for slaughterhouses to handle dogs and cats, and it's illegal for stores to sell the meat. However, individuals, yes, that includes families, in most states can kill and eat a dog or cat or sell the meat to other people. It's not just that the death toll adds up, there are some leftovers. That doesn't mean the amount of dogs left necessarily, though that's technically true, it's just the leftovers. Now look, this is not some sort of double standard. We can't arbitrarily still claim that 19 million turkeys were eaten on Easter because leftovers for turkey still don't count up as, you know, whole turkeys or they don't just add up at all. The same goes with ham, but with dogs, that's a completely different story. According to Purina's article called What is Average Dog Weight? This section says since dogs come in so many different breeds and sizes, it's impossible to identify an average weight for all dogs. Weight may also depend on the dog's sex and whether they've been spayed or neutered. Although many resources provide an average weight range for different breeds, it's usually significant. These ranges often don't take the dog's sex and other factors into consideration. For example, a typical weight range you might see for a Labrador Retriever is 55 to 80 pounds. That's a big range and most female labs shouldn't weigh 80 pounds. They should fall on the lower end of the range. Weight ranges also don't account for the many mixed breed dogs out there. Just because the typical range for a lab is 55 to 80 pounds does not mean your lab mix will or should fall within that range. It will depend on the other breeds he's mixed with. Plus, what if you don't know the breed makeup of your mixed breed dog? What then? Most resources say to use the dominant breed, but even then you're guessing what that is. An average dog weight or range definitely does not work for mixed breeds. And it's not that the death toll is slightly off at all. Since I cannot find any average weight of a dog, it's better to use that reasoning. I have proven my point. I am Secret Agent Bry Guy, signing out.